Hey guys, what's going on? I am Sam Crack, and finally, we're not working on the pizza car today. We are going to be working on the C6 Corvette Grand Sport Rebuild Project. The first day, we're going to finally get some work in it. Now, I know you guys want me to finish this. This is the first priority, and it still is and remains first priority as far as the rebuild projects go. And well, I did get a little bit of work done yesterday. Let me show you exactly what I did. So I went ahead off camera and I repaired this wiring harness. You guys might have remembered this corner of the wiring harness since this is where the major impact was in the accident uh, was indeed damaged. There was one or two pieces here that I went and cut directly from the donor car and spliced right in place. So we've got basically a clean brand new harness implanted in and that is beautiful. Anywhere you see this sort of fabric -y electrical tape, that's what you see typically on German cars. I have a roll of it and I like to use it on the uh, repaired areas. So if I do have any issues, I can go back and look exactly where I did do the repairs. But otherwise, this should be finished. I know it doesn't appear this way, but we're almost finished with this car. Once I do take care of this damage here in the corner, uh, really I expect anywhere from three to five hours reassembling the whole front end of this car. Another two to three hours of the interior. Things don't always go the way you want them to, so probably another two to three hours of diagnosis and fine tuning everything. We'll have a complete pizza car. My goal is to finish the Domino's car by Christmas. So that's it, just a little bit more work and we'll have this pizza car rolling in no time. Now before I take you over to the Corvette, I wanna do a quick giveaway because well, it's the Christmas season and you notice this month, I've been trying to do as many giveaways as possible. I saw this and thought someone out there would absolutely love it. Or maybe you have a son or daughter, maybe you have a niece or nephew, someone in your life you wanna give this to. It's a Fast and the Furious retro Dodge Charger. And what's really neat, it has all different sorts of body panels, different suspension setups, kind of like some of the work we're gonna be doing today and kind of like some of the work we've been doing in the past few weeks on the pizza car. I thought that this was a really fun and fitting giveaway item. And to win, well, you just gotta do a couple things. Well, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications and make sure those notifications are turned on on your smartphone. The way I announce all the winners to all these giveaways is I reply to your comment down below. That's the last thing you really got to do. If you just do those few things and you live in the USA, well, you're entered to win right there. Now let's take you over to that C6 Corvette. Oh yeah, I forgot. Just make sure you hit that like button. So you guys saw already, it's cracked right here. This whole entire subframe needs to be removed. And uh, that's going to be one heck of a task. But first, we want to remove the leaf spring, which is right here. And in order to do that, they do make a leaf spring compression tool instead. You see Mike right here is jacking the car up in the corner, and it's going to relieve some of the tension off the leaf spring. That way, when we go ahead and remove it, we lower the jack, there'll be no tension on it, and we'll be able to just pull it out. All right, so got our leaf spring out here, and let's not have it hit the camera. This is exactly why we are replacing it. You can see it's cracked and shredded a little bit here, but that came out relatively easy. At this point, we're just disassembling the rest of the suspension. Obviously, you guys have seen the control arm on that side was cracked along with the uh, subframe. So we want to get all of that out of there. It's going to have to be disassembled on both sides where it connects the subframe. Obviously broke off there. And then on this side, see it's attached right there to there. So we're going to go ahead, take all of that. That will leave us with some ideas on how to support the engine from up top here. And also down below, we already have kind of a good idea where we're going to support the engine from. Once we do that, it's a lot of bolts and that subframe should come right out. And we've got our replacement one right here. All right, so at this point we've removed the entire front corner suspension 
from the Corvette. Uh, this is the driver's side, obviously, and it was just easier to get everything out of the way here. I don't think we'll have to disassemble that much on the passenger side, but of course it was because this control arm down here is cracked. And whenever you're removing a control arm from the whole hub assembly here, you need a separator tool. At least in my experience, there's some people that have been able to, you know, take a hammer like this and hit the side of the control arm, they pop off. I've never ever had that ha uh, happen. I had to run out and get this pickle fork here. I have a different sort of tool, but right now I'm gonna set the camera down. I'm gonna try and pry this hub assembly off the control arm so we can put everything back in that corner when we get there. I, this does not spin. Not going in. Keep going, just keep hitting it. It's almost all in, huh? 20 minutes later. Whoa, that's it. That's all we needed. <laughs> all right, there it is. Well, the pickle fork did the trick. Here you see our cracked control arm. You can see the bushing even looks a little bit messed up, probably from sitting funny after this crack. Here's our brand new one. It's the same thing. There's just a cover over the boot here. This nut comes off, the plastic comes off. But yeah, that thing came off uh, with a little bit of work. We're gonna reuse the upper A arm there, and we're going to reuse, obviously, the hub assembly there. You can see we've got it sitting on a piece of wood because if we didn't, someone in the comment section would go ballistic. So initially I bought this bar right here. This is an engine support bar. I've showed it to you guys in another video and essentially it's supposed to sit here on the apron area of the car. We remove the coolant tank that was right there. And what it does is you hook a chain on this end, hook another chain on that end, and you loop it underneath, find a place to mount uh, the engine from above and then you turn these things and you support it. So what we're finding out is, first of all, you don't want to put it directly right here if you're looking, this piece moves. This is a piece of fiberglass, it's molded and glued onto the car, same thing on the other side. Of course, if we put any pressure on that, you're gonna crack this. This was already cracked a little bit right here from the accident, shouldn't be the end of the world. Um, we'll, we got the broken piece, we're gonna try and fiberglass repair this. Again, this is not a major structural component, this is right here. So basically, we've got this. Now inside here where you see this harness, we could probably find somewhere there to put it, but then of course the bar is gonna be in the way of the alternator. Everything here is kinda of low slung. And in the uh, repair manual that I have, it shows almost like a cherry picker going up and over, grabbing the motor and holding it from above. So we're gonna see if we still can't put this bar to good use. I've heard of people modifying the edges, but what we're going to do right now is we have like three jacks. We have several jack stands, brand new jack right there, and we're going to jack it underneath the car where the engine meets the transmission. We're gonna jack it uh, as close to the subframe as we can underneath the car. I'll show you a shot of that in one second. But then we're gonna unbolt the motor mounts from underneath the car we're going to do one at a time and jack the motor up slowly so that it's supported. As long as everything looks like it's being supported properly, there's no major wobbles, we'll be good to go ahead and remove this cross member. All right, so this is where we're at, guys. We've got a piece of wood supporting right on the bottom of the... Uh, is that the oil pan it's on, Mike? Yes. Yeah, so right underneath the engine on the oil pan. And Mike hit his finger a little no, bit. Sam hit my finger. I hit Mike's bit. finger. And so that is being supported. Now what Mike's going to do right now, he's going to get this supported on a jack stand or two. We've got a couple of jack stands. So when Mike jacks this up, we should see the motor shift just a little bit. So whenever you're ready, Mike, he's just going to move the jack a little bit right now. We should see the motor move up. And if it does... Mike, it's basically already touching the top here, but yeah, it's moving just a little bit. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I could see just we're talking about millimeters here. Oh, wow. This is already close to touching. It is touching the top, but it did move a little bit, which means that the jack at this point is supporting the engine, which is good 
but we want to get a jack stand on there to be safe. We don't want anything shifting. We're going to try and get as much support underneath the car as possible before we go ahead and lower that subframe. Before we go ahead and start taking the K-member down, there's one important thing, and this is where uh, the repair manual saved my butt because otherwise we would have been in big trouble. You could see right there, let me get you close, there is a wiring harness that runs along the K-member, and it's only in with a few pins. And so basically we want to pry that out before we go ahead and do that. This right here is the appropriate tool for that. This is a trim or pin removal tool. So we'll get underneath here and it just grabs these things and pulls them right out of place. This tool is super cheap. Pick up one of these if you don't have it. I see other YouTubers, specifically one using a steak knife and that's a stupid idea. Always use a trim removal tool and not only will the job go easier, you won't break any of these clips, and well, it'll just be a cleaner job when you're done. So we decided to remove the passenger side suspension as well. We did leave this strut in place here, but otherwise everything else is over there on the ground. It was just easier to maneuver the cross member out of the way when we did. So total time spent today removing the cross member was about four hours, which included removing the front corner uh, suspensions, the wheels, tires, which we actually struggled on in the beginning because there were wheel locks on this car and well, came from auction without the wheel key. So anyway, we have the new cross member in. You can see, remember the old one was cracked right there. This one is perfect. And we have it supported in all four corners and on the two motor mounts. So everything should be safe to sit overnight at this point. And well, all we have to do is remount all the lines, everything that goes there. And it's going to be a matter of just putting everything back where it belongs our radiator, our condenser, our uh, support bar here. You can see I've got parts laying everywhere. This should go back within a few more days and I'm really excited about that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the work today on the C6 Corvette. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Guys, that is the major step in repairing this car. Once we get everything assembled, make sure all the fluids are good. We're going to go ahead and start it up and hopefully we've got a really nice low mileage and, and almost mint condition Corvette Grand Sport. Once I clean off all the panels and everything, I, I don't really think this car is going to need a whole lot of paint either. I'm pretty excited about this one. Make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. Of course, if you're not subscribed, you're not entered to win this awesome Dodge Charger rebuild kit here. Thanks a whole lot for watching and I will catch you very soon. Yeah.